Hey guys. It's Kelly. Lily. I'm Rich. The one of us ventures. This week we've been working night shifts, long shifts and all sorts in a bid to try and get the bus ready for our very first trip. As you can see we're out on the road again and we're going to walk you through doing things like a shower cubicle, testing our water heater, cleaning the bus, packing and all that sorts of stuff. So hope you enjoy. Sorry about the saw in, we're all hand on deck today. We're just cutting some window sills from some nine mil ply. I'm using this profiling tool just to get the edge of the windows out because the window sills are like. Um, made a template, I'm just seeing if it's gonna work. Bottoms are gonna be nine mil ply because that's what we've got. And the edges we're gonna make out of like four millimeter pine. Um, and then we're gonna use a little bit of L trim for the tiles around the front and around the sides. Dave has been around today. He's been really busy mocking up what these look like. What I'm gonna do now, so, so tomorrow when he pops around, is just take the window seals out and I'm gonna Osmo oil them, both front and back, top and bottom, to ensure that they don't swell when they get wet and then we'll be bonding those in place. I think we're gonna leave the finish of the pine as it is because it actually looks nice and warm so we'll have to oil that too we're just installing it with some ebt so this stuff remains flexible um it's very strong so we're just installing it all, all of the things all the way around we're gonna have screws through these eventually but for now this will be more than enough we hope we're really pleased with how these have come out um lots of work went into them and um, we'll be doing these in the future. One of the things we sort of need, we don't need a working shower, but that we definitely need is some walls on our toilet shower, our shoilet, as it was christened uh, by someone on Graham's channel. I forget who it was. But yeah, if you're watching, put it down below, whoever christened that, because it's genius. So we decided to build ours on a wheel arch, which was efficient with the space, but not that smart because it's actually high obviously and we want to maintain some sort of gradient so i'm just trying to figure out how i can make a base that will still have a incline on it to allow for some drainage when we're on flat ground we're under no illusion here that we're going to be able to build something that uh like others have done where you've got extreme sort of gradient where you, you know you could really shower on the wonk um but we're going to create enough for runoff and we're going to make the base first I'm going to be making it out of batten and plywood. Like anything that we've done, this is the first time that we built a shower tray. Um, and the first thing we did was build a frame. I've got 18 mil marine ply here. This is what I'm going to make the base from. I've got the main support structure in underneath. And now I'm going to cut the, you know, the shower tray and see how it fits on there because the undulations of the arch itself and the different depths of wood I've got are causing me some wonk factor. Um, so once this is on, I'll be able to see what I need to adjust. I think there's going to be some planing involved and so we can get it to um, radiate down towards the drain and not foul on the toilet as well. You foul in the toilet, not on it. So I'm just going to cut this to its depth first. So our charger is going to be 59.5 and it's going to be 94.5 wide from the internal dimension. So you can see it's going to be quite a size. What I'm going to do now is just drill out the holes for the water pipes to come up through the wall. And then I'm going to sicker the base to the supports underneath. And then add a couple of screw pocket holes from the, in from the underside just into the plywood. At first glance, it does look like we've got actually a good tapered base now this will get a liberal coating of sealant before we put it down for the final time for the final finish on the top we're actually going to use like outro vinyl I've seen it using a fair few showers it's completely waterproof and it's tough as nails um we'll get a, like a nice design you know with some shiny sparkle in it or something and it'll keep it nice and lightweight and we can cut it to the shape of the tray, which is important because it's an odd shape. Anyway, I'm going to pop it back in for now. I will need to order another 
drain for it. I'm going to go for a simple caravan type drain, which has actual plug in it. Just keep it simple. We were going to go for a domestic one, but we just don't have the clearance and be able to maintain the angle that we need for it to drain. Here is our quite dirty grey water tank. Um, you can see here that I've taken it from underneath the bus where it was secured and I've already popped in the level gauge. So this is just a resistive gauge that's going to work with our Serbo GX. We're doing like a version one of this at the moment. So I'm going to put a breather hose in the top of it for the moment. So when it's filling or emptying, um, the pressure can be released and it will work properly. And we're going to put a drain in the bottom and that's going to come out to a simple tap um, in the future. After we've done our first shakedown trip and a couple of trips probably, we're going to put another tank over the other side for the shower that's going to run into this one. And we quite like the idea of having a remote solenoid to empty the tank. So anyone that's done that, let us know. I added a flexible waste into the end that then ran to the pipe that was already put through the floor in the previous video and reinstalled it ready to go. Today I'm working on the frame ends for here and here and then tie it all together with some plywood. Sounds simple doesn't it? So first step I'm going to measure the uprights um, and then we'll measure the cross sections. For these I'm actually going to pocket hole them front and back. I figured out it's so thick you can get four screws on each end and it's solid so I'm just popping these in and making the ladder frame. Dave is sanding. We also drilled out holes for pipes and cables. We've made a frame for this end. We're happy with it, it's strong. We're just making the frame for the other end now. Um, and we're actually going to use the toilet box which is sturdy as you like as the frame and end wall and then we've got a fighting start a kit of a shower then you can see here how we chose to screw them together again with two pot holes on each side so four in total on each joint that's really strong you can climb on that um, especially when it's actually secured in whilst we were squaring off the frame Kelly and Tina came in with their first thermal blinds we can show you how we make these if you like all right so the end frames are made and I've cut this top section to match the width of the tray so 94 and a half um, I'm going to cut another one of these as well to go along the back temporary so I can make sure it goes in square before we can do that we need to take everything out and drill a hole out for our drain and I'm opting for a very simple motorhome camper van Reich drain um, that comes out on a 29 mil hose, 28.5. We'll just come out and drop through the floor and then you have a little bung to go in to stop any water or smells coming up. But I've also managed to find a suitable one-way valve I'm gonna put under the floor. Once it was out, I created a barrier of insulation with close hole foam and some sheep's wool insulation on the pipes. Meanwhile, Dave used his router to just cut out the hole for the plug hole. We recessed this in place and then put the frame back in, and this was all then secured into the van. Plug hole's in, it is a small plug hole, but um, you know, we're gonna be using the shower pretty sparingly and not on like full throttle like you would in your house. So we're hoping it should be enough. I'm gonna get it to the stage where I framed out the middle bit with some ply, I'm gonna use nine mil ply. So we're gonna cut it to height, the maximum height. Now I'm gonna cut the sheet in half and then try and scribe it in both ends. What happened then is I'm pretty sure a world record of the number of scribes I took to try and get it right. Right, I'm chasing. Uh, 
fit scribe here. This is, this is where, this is where uh, battles are won and lost, people. Should I have twisted? Let's find out. Let me show you. I'm gonna seal all this up anyway. Up here, that's pretty, pretty good, isn't it? A little bit of a gap there. And I've got a bit of a gap at the top. I'll fix that with some sealant, but overall, pretty pleased with that. So what I'm gonna do now is clamp this to the board and draw down the back here um, so I can cut that back edge off. The next day I focused on the other end. So I put this supporting piece underneath temporary and then scribed in this end piece that was sitting on the toilet box itself. I'm just gonna make a cross piece now for the top. I've already made one, but now it's too long. But because it's got pocket holes, if you cut them off, you cut the pocket holes off too. So I'm just gonna make one of them and then we can size up the front. Because for time being, we're gonna put a piece of ply on the front um, and test to see how that goes. But we might end up taking that off completely and just having like a sliding squeegee door do the whole thing. But if we do it this way, we've got a little bit of privacy for when we go away now. Um, and we can test to see if that works. Nothing like a real world test, I don't think. I think, I don't think, I don't know. I didn't notice this scab when it arrived. Never mind. This might end up only being temporary only, but if not, we'll have to repair it. Check your word when it arrives. So then I cut this to the maximum height and I cut a little bit off the width just to make it easier to use. And when it was in the van, drew a line down the back, cut that off. Now what we've got is like a sealed room that you cannot get into. So what I've done is I've put this on the front and screwed it in place for now with some short screws. Um, so I can work out where the door's gonna go. So what I'm gonna do after my tea, I'm gonna go my tea now, is punch a hole through here. I did that with a drill bit, and then I used my jigsaw just to rough out a hole big enough for me to climb inside. And then I drew around the inner frame, made a temporary inner frame for the bottom, and then measured up where I was gonna cut it out before removing it from the van. And I used my plunge saw to just cut this neatly to size. So I love using the plunge saw because you get absolutely arrow straight edges and then you can just take the corners out just with a little pull saw. Temporary slash maybe long term shoiler solution is complete. So we will we'll probably chuck like a curtain or something over this for the time being, but we can use this now as a toilet. I'm confident of that just to try it out. Um, and then in the very near future, we can do stage number two. We glue back on stage number two of figuring out what the final door solution will be, and then lining this, getting the shower installed, and then that, and the light installed, and all of that. But the framing and the framework for the shower is done. It's absolutely solid. Wow! It'll work for now, won't it? Yeah. Oh, it's really cute. I don't know if we'll um Oh there's plenty of room to sit on and Yeah, I don't know if we'll take this away though when we get the squeegee door but Yeah. I don't know if we can make a little something up. Maybe we'll probably get a little cheap shower curtain or something. Yeah, just yeah. for now. We've got so much to do. We're supposed to be going away tomorrow. But Liddy's been ill and uh, yeah, we've got so much to do. We don't know if we're going to be there tomorrow or not. <laughs> no, there's loads to do. And I was up, I was working on this till nine o'clock last night yeah. after work. Um, but we got, a f I've got a few things to do sort of build wise before we can go. And we want to clean it and obviously get everything in it as well. So we can use it. Still not bought everything for it. Still not got any food for four days. I don't know if the water heater works because it's not wired up yet. Yeah, never has been. I need to like jerry rig up a, a waste tap to the waste tank underneath um, because that's not on there yet. And a few other bits and bobs. Loads of cleaning. And loads of cleaning because it's so dusty in here. 
but we do want to try and go and test it. So we could not do any of this and not put ourselves under the pressure, but at the same time, we kind of want to see if it will, what will work. Yeah. So don't know if we'll be there tomorrow or Wednesday or not, but hopefully we'll make it at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to crack on and try and get the parents round this afternoon to help as well, if we can. Um, I'm cleaning up the bus and I've got to try and get him out now. When did you come in? He had a heart attack when I saw him. He looks like a little teddy. Poor thing. Okay. Um, it just let me pick it up and now it's in, it flew in the bush. It let me pick it up with my hand. And we that, it's a baby blue tit. Hopefully it's mum will be, or dad will be back in a minute. I'm going to kill off the front of the fridge. Go on then. Oh. Well, it's a hot bar, then. Let's go and get this stuff where I want to move it. You hear the sound? Ring loud! Dun dun dun! Good job! Okay, this is Lily's mattress. I don't know what way it goes up, so I guess I'll unfold it down here because there's not a lot of room. Now, Mum, do you think it's better to open it down here then, put it up there, or is it gonna go? Okay, opened it. It's expanding, <laughs> and it's awkward. Trying to give him birth to a baby. <laughs> Trying to get something big into this tiny hole. <laughs> Maybe that's opposite. And it sounds like all of that. Hang on, hang on. Oh god. The glamour. I put it the right way up. Yes, I have, not I? I don't know. There. Wow. It's in. Perfect. I take it over in the hole. Not a breath. There was a toast squeeze. It's great. Yeah, it's a custom made one, this one. Very nice. www.cuttagesizebeds.co.uk. This is not sponsored, we paid full price for it. <laughs> Can we recycle this? <laughs> Ooh, you look like Kaz for the go. <laughs> okay, next is our double mattress by Emma. Came really quick, this dead. Don't worry, Steve <laughs> That's the slogan as said by my mum. <laughs> if you need someone for your next advert, you know who to contact. <sighs> now I've got to try and get this on the bed. This one is probably going to knock me out once I've undone it. <laughs> Look at it! <laughs> it's like a giant pink slug. <laughs> Oh god. Okay, let's try and get out of the box, Mum. Oh, I got weak and couldn't lift it. I've not got your head in, Mum, it's okay. Anonymous. It's gonna be enough. <laughs> Give me in the bum. Don't you open it, I want to open it. I'm not <laughs> Hi, Dad. Hi. <laughs> oh god. I've not been cast off with a bottle of ring, so that's got to be a good thing, right? You've got style, she's got grace. <laughs> Open the other mattress in your face. <laughs> it's in! It's comfy, I'm sweating, it was hard work. <laughs> Here comes Richard, I think. And then is it now we've just got to let it puff up overnight and get the stink out. <laughs> so hot. <laughs> we 
we were in the garage, in the garage area, like trying to pull all the plastic off. <laughs> oh my god, that's high. Yeah, it's comfy. Oh, dude, I'm sweating. It was such hard work. Where's Lily? Is it comfortable? Yes. We got you a 15 centimetre mattress. So it should be very comfortable for a little girl. We popped a bag in the toilet so we can try and use that essential. I'm going to put our media in there in a minute. We've gone for like biodegradable cat pellet thingies and then we're hoping to get some sawdust and stuff to put on top of there too. Uh, toilet rolls are in there. We need to put toilet wipes and things in there as well. But one of the things that we want to just pop in is a smoke alarm and a CO2 detector. I'm going to pop it on the end of here, on this end wall for now, which is likely where it'll end up living anyway, once the final wall is on. But it's a good place for the time being. So we've gone for an optical smoke detector, uh, so-called known as a toast proof detector, because it basically senses in a different way. Um, so it's supposed to be better for things like camper vans where you're cooking in an enclosed space and you're, you're going to have smoke quite easily. Um, and then we've got a carbon monoxide detector, dedicated one as well, that I'm going to install here so we can keep ourselves safe and sound. In the evening, I also hooked up the iMass water heater and I'm pleased to announce that we have hot water. Yeah! We've packed and we are exhausted. <laughs> so tired, my back's killing. <laughs> We're nearly ready. So we should be at the Overlander show now as you're watching this. So if you're there, we hope we've seen you. Uh, and we'll be covering that in our next video. Yeah. So until then, do take care. Hope you've had a great bank holiday weekend. And we'll see you soon. One, two, three. Bye. Bye.